Okay, so today I'm going to show you the basics of NumPy. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import NumPy. Okay, then we have to create a NumPy array. And to make a NumPy array, I think the easiest way to do that is to use mp.array. So let's do that. Okay, awesome. Now, this isn't the only way to make a NumPy array. Another way to make a NumPy array is to use a range. So let's do that instead. So let's do mp.a range. And what I'm doing here is I'm just saying I want a range with 10 elements, hit enter. And as you can see, NumPy gives us a range with 10 elements inside of it. I can also specify the beginning of a range. So if I don't want a zero, I can just say one to 10. And as you can see, we get uh, nine elements here, or I can even specify a step. So I can say I want uh, every third element in this list. Now, if you already use Python, you're probably familiar with how this works. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this. So let's move on. Now, another way of creating a NumPy array is to use mp0s. And what mp0s does is it basically gives you a NumPy array with a bunch of zeros inside of them. So let's uh, see how that works. Okay, so we got back a array with a bunch of zeros inside of it. Awesome. Next up. Now, another way of creating a NumPy array would be to use a linspace. And a linspace is actually pretty interesting because I don't think there is an equivalent to this function in Python. So the way it works is like this. So what I did here is I specified a beginning and I specified an end and I specified how many um, how many elements I want in total. So what the lint space is going to do is it's going to create elements for you from the smallest element to the largest and it's going to create however many you set. So if you say I want to have, let's say, so let's say I want to have elements from zero to one and I want to have, and let's say I want to have 100 elements, and I want them to be evenly spaced between 0 and 1. It's going to create 100 elements, which are evenly distributed between the numbers 0 and 1. So as you can see, maybe you don't see it. Let's just make this a little smaller. Let's just make this a little smaller, and let's try this again. So as you can see, we begin at 0, then it goes to 1, or should I say, so as you can see, it begins at 0, then goes to 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and then so on and so on. So in NumPy, you can also create random numbers like this. So I can say mp.random.random. So in this example, what I did is I created 10 elements, which just have a random number from 0 up until 1. Now, we can also randomly shuffle arrays in NumPy like this. So let's say I want to make an array like this. And let's check X. And as you can see, I have the numbers from one to nine. Now what I can do here is I can shuffle them randomly like this. Now keep in mind, a NumPy's shuffle doesn't actually return a new array. It just changes the array in place. So if we check X, as you can see, so as you can see, our numbers got shuffled around randomly. If you want, you can also create random integers. So for example, you can do something like this. So let's do that now. And as you can see, I created random integers from one to five and I believe five is exclusive. So what we can do here is we can actually save this to a variable like this. So I'm going to save it to X. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the unique function and I'm going to do MP dot unique and I'm going to pass X into this. And this gives us back a new array, which just has the unique elements. And if we check X, as you can see, let's see. So basically, this is just a list with only four and three. So the, so the unique elements in this array were uh, three and four, and that's why we got three and four as a result. Okay, so let's uh, clear this for now and let's make a new random list. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to find every indice where the number, let's say, 2 appears. So what I can do here is... Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm passing through this where function x, and I'm saying, uh, give me all of the indices where the number 2 appears. Hit enter, and as you can see, we got 2 and 6. And is this correct? Let's check. 0, 1, 2. Yeah, do we have a 2 here? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and we have one here. Awesome. So we can actually save this to Y. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the take function to take those indices. So I'm going to say, so I'm going to say mp.take. So what I'm doing here is I'm passing in X and then I'm, I'm passing in Y. X is our basically initial array and Y is the result of this where function. 
So hit enter, and as you can see, we got back our twos. That may not be interesting, but it can actually come in handy in some situations. Okay, so next up, imagine you have a two-dimensional array. So for example, I can create a new array like this. Let's check this array, and as you can see, it's it's basically an array of zeros like this. So what I want to do now is I want to basically uh, reshape this into a one-dimensional array. So to do that, we can do something like this. So as you can see, what we did is we basically passed this to Ravel like this. We did mp.ravel and we passed in our two-dimensional array, and it basically gave us, I think the proper term for this is a flattened array. So basically we flatten down into a one-dimensional array. Okay, so next up is tile. So I'm gonna do mp.tile. And what this takes is it takes an array, and then it takes the number of times you want to repeat this array. So for example, I can do something like this. So what I'm doing here is I'm passing in the tile, this, well, it be, this to be array, and I'm saying I want to repeat this array five times. Hit enter, and as you can see, we get back a single array, which just repeats this. We have zero, one, and two, and then we repeat this about, yeah, it's about five times. Now, a similar function is mp repeat, and the way it works is like this. So I guess the difference between these two are that mp repeat repeats the elements of this range, while uh, mp tile just uh, repeats the range itself. I think that's the difference. Anyways, let's uh, carry on. Okay, so the next one is mpdiff. And basically what this does is it takes an array and it calculates the difference between the elements along that array. So for example, as you can see, all of these elements are equally spaced. So it gives us one, 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 one because the difference between them is basically just all ones. If we do the same thing, but with the same number. So for example, So as you can see, it gives us a zero because there's no difference between any of these. And uh, next up, if we begin at a high number, so for example, if I begin at nine and then go down to one, and then let's say I go back to nine and then go back to one, as you can see, it also calculates a negative difference like this. So that's pretty simple, I think. Let's move on. Okay, so the next function I wanna show you is sum. So what I can do is I can do mp.sum, uh, pass in some variable, hit enter, and as you can see, the result is zero, let's check X. So this was an array of all zeros. Let's actually make a range instead. Okay, so as you can see, the sum here is 45. Let's check X. And as you can see, X is every single element from one to nine. Okay, so the next one is compress. Compress works something like this. Okay, so I have this array X, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna compress this array like this. I'm gonna do compress, and I'm gonna say, I want every single element where X module, module two is equal to zero. And we have to also pass in our array like this. Hit enter, and as you can see, we got back all of the even numbers. Now, keep in mind, you can also just simply pass in a list like this. We can say true, false, uh, false, false, I think this would work. Right. So you can also pass in another true here. So basically it's going to take the first, let's say one, two, three, four. So the, it's going to take the first four elements and it's going to see which one we want. So we want the first one and then we want uh, the fourth one. And as you can see, it gives us the first element and it gives us the fourth element. And as you can see, my uh, array X begins at one. So it doesn't begin at zero. Okay, next up. Okay, so for this example, I'm gonna make a random array of uh, numbers. So I'm gonna say, okay, so what we have here is 10 elements from one to 10. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna call mp.clip. I'm gonna pass in x, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass in, let's say, uh, the minimum and the maximum. So basically what's gonna happen is if some element is at the maximum, it's gonna give me the maximum I specified. If some element is at the minimum, it's gonna give me the element I specified instead of the minimum. So for, or should I say, it's gonna give me the minimum I specified instead of the element itself. Okay, 
Uh, anyways, I'll show you how it works and then I think you'll figure it out. So basically, I'm going to say I want the minimum value I get back to be 2 and then I want the maximum value I get back to be, let's say, 7. Hit enter and as you can see, just the, the array for reference. So as you can see, we got a 5 and then we got a 7. We got a 2. So as you can see, here's the first difference. The first difference is that in the original array, the, this element was 8 and then in this array, it's actually a 2. And then, as you can see, yeah, so it basically changed this. Uh, it changed this element, it changed this element. Let's uh, try again with uh, different, um, <clears throat> let's try again with different arguments. So let's try five and uh, eight to make it more interesting, or I guess five and six. So as you can see, now what we get back is we get back a five. <clears throat> so as you can see, now what we get back is we get five, six, which is different from seven. We get a five here instead of a one. Uh, we get a six here instead of an eight. Uh, we get a five instead of a two, a six instead of an eight, a five, and well, actually th these are the same. Uh, then we get a six, a six, and a five. So I hope that makes sense. Basically what you do is just pass in uh, an array like this, and then you specify your minimum and your maximum values, and it just basically uh, clips those uh, values for you. I think this uh, I think that this kind of a thing is called a clamp in uh, other languages, but um, yeah, you can look that up yourself. Now, if you use Python, you know that if you have two lists like this, you can actually if you do x plus y, what you get back is you get one list concatenated to the other list. Now, if you try to do the same thing with NumPy, this is what you get. So you basically get the two numbers summed. So you get five because one and four is five. You get seven because two and seven, uh, two and five are seven, and you get nine because three and six are nine. Now, to actually concatenate these two lists, instead of just adding them together, what you have to do is you have to use the... So you have to use the concatenate function like this. So as you can see, what I did is I passed in concatenate. Make sure you pass this in a tuple like this. And what it, what this gave us is we gave, it gave us an array with 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And that's pretty much what you expect. Okay, next up. Okay, so finally, I have a couple of... Uh, functions I want to show you and I need an array for this so I'm going to say x dot so I'm going to say x is equal to mp dot random okay so we have a random array like this and what I want to do is I want to get the biggest element from this array and to do that I can use mp max and as you can see that's the largest element I can do mp min and that is the smallest element I can get the mean of this uh, array. Now let's make a new one with negative elements. So as you can see now, we go from negative 10 to positive 10. And the reason I did this is because I want to show you can get the absolute value from these elements. So you can say mp.abs, pass an x, and as you can see, instead of a negative 7, we get a 7. So because that's the absolute value of, se of negative 7 is 7. Uh, you can also pass in, you can also use the square root function like this. And as you can see, well, I guess some of these don't have a result. Now, this is actually a good time to show you how you can actually use NumPy to filter out bad data. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna clear out all the negative numbers and I'm gonna clear out all of the zeros. And I'm gonna say X is greater than zero. And let's close this, hit enter. And as you can see, we get the square root of all of these elements. Now to see what we got without this is we get, so we basically get six, one, four, and four. Uh, if we check, if we check the original array, if we check the original array, as you can see, we got six, negative uh, seven, zero, zero, seven, one, negative six, four, four, and negative nine. Okay, so I think I'll call it here. If you enjoyed this video, remember to give me a like, subscribe, and I will see you later.